allies. Allies should probably be more accomplices when you think about it. Wanted to throw something out here. I just wanted to read an excerpt from an article written by Sally Kahn. This article was published last year in the Washington Post. Sally Kahn is one of those situations where you see someone who is a non-person of color and she gets it. However, there are, shockingly enough, people of color who don't get it, who you would think would, but they don't. I want to read this excerpt from her article because the main point of the article is about how politically conscious people from all the different marginalized circles have got to be about the business of their liberation. If they, if they want allies and can take allies, they will. But the point is that it's not their job to try to convince people who like for things to stay the same to come over to them. Because all you're going to hear is a bunch of hemming and hawing, cherry picking arguments and making excuses. I'm reading now. In his searing new book, Between the World and Me, Tanasi Coates implies that it's not his job or, by extension, the job of other black voices or leaders to coach white folks, let alone worry about their feelings, which it's not. The whole point is that we white people should be the ones thinking more about black people, their feelings, their experience, and their reality, which can be dramatically different than our own. But at the same time, Coates concludes his text noting and struck that structural racism won't change until white people change. There are already white people who want change, and want to help spur change in their communities. Many people are reticent to speak out for fear of misspeaking. Others want to do something, but don't know what to do. Instead of continuing to unconsciously reinforce structural racism in America, there are many white people who want to consciously help deconstruct and dismantle it. But how? It's not up to Black Lives Matter, nor any movement led by and for communities of color to make space for or articulate a vision for white people. The expectation that black leaders and movements should automatically do so as a subtle extension of the sort of white-centric entitlement that gives rise to the need for such movements in the first place. Then again, we haven't exactly blazed a path to enlightenment and liberation so far on our own. Now, I'm just going to read that part. The rest of the article is great. I've left the link in the low bar so that you may read it. Of course, Sally Khan is not the only person who's been, who thinks this way. She's not the first. I was 20 years old when I met a gaggle of white people who think this way and completely, and I'm going to quote, I'm going to repeat the phase get it so people understand that they get it if they don't get it fuck them it's just that simple the real worry that i have about dallas is that what's going to happen is yet another precedent will, will be another precedent set against freedom of protest or political actions of any kind but especially if those actions are targeted towards the police we don't know who the shooters were still. We don't know anything. We know someone was captured. We know some of them had already killed themselves before being captured. We have no idea so far who the shooters were. Politically, I see a potential here for a real fucking problem. Because already the right wing and the corporate media are putting out this political line that, oh, well, if the demo didn't happen to begin with, well, maybe the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca, shouldn't happen. Because as we all know, a terrorist attack took place there. Oh, wait, you probably all didn't know about that since, of course, the victims were, non, uh, were not white. <clears throat> and so, therefore, it wasn't an act of terrorism, I guess. Uh, from what I definitely know from four different news sources, that action that took place in Dallas was a peaceful one. And it was wrapping up. And then that's when 
the shots rang out. And last time I remember <laughs> looking, if you're in a large crowd and random gunfire goes off, no one just continues to walk orderly down the street and no one sticks around to see what's going on. So I can guarantee you that we're going to see a lot more backlash coming from the right wing and nowhere else, believe me, on whether or not there should ever be any more anti-police protests. Because one, uh, Black Lives Matter is not synonymous with anti-police protests, by the way. There have been anti-police protests and actions ever since I was in my 20s, or at least the ones I've ever been involved in. Black Lives Matter did not exist back then. So whatever you do, don't let anyone start lying and start trying to say that what happened in Dallas had anything to do with Black Lives Matter, because it didn't. I do know one thing. If anyone tells you that there should not have been a protest there, that's a statement of silencing, which means that we should be silent and keep allowing for things like this to happen. Well, that's all I have to say. This is the Garage Autonomist. <laughs>